Exercise 17. In this exercise, we're going to look at how to implement uh, putting in equations to control your model better inside SOLIDWORKS. So uh, here's a little example here. You can see the images. This is actually of um, a, a container that you might find inside of a jewel or um, a salad bar where you could fill up on salad. And uh, there needed to be two different sizes or several different sizes and they needed to be designed on the fly versus completely reconstructing them, uh, we we're able to actually implement equations that will actually control the length and width, or as we actually type in the length and width, it will control the rib stacking that you see on them. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and just keep this very simple. We're going to draw a rectangle off of the origin and put in some dimensions. So let's begin. So we start with a new part. And we start by selecting the front plane and quick launch to sketch. Take the rectangle tool and drag out a rectangle, just like that. Go ahead and add, a dimension, add the dimensions. This is going to be 4 inches. And this is going to be 2 and then a radius of 1 inch. So then we go to Sketched Fillet, make it 1 inch, select the corner. The next step, we're going to go ahead and extrude it. So we go to Features, Extrude Boss, make sure you hit Apply to the uh, Sketch Fillet to get out of that. And if we take a look at our picture here, we have to extrude it back 1.5 inches. And then, as a separate function, we add Draft. So we don't want to add the draft in the same function. So let's hit blind at 0.5, hit reverse. Actually, I'm sorry, I already have uh, 1.5, my mistake. And hit enter. And now we just need to add draft on these three faces here. So we'll add draft. And the neutral plane will be our top surface. And then those three faces need to be selected. So for neutral plane, select that. Make sure the arrow is pointing up. And the faces to draft will just be three, these three faces. And hit Apply. OK, the next thing we need to do is select the underside face, start a sketch, and we're going to draw a little circle. And we're going to begin creating our ribs here. So now we could go ahead and just dimension that right off of that line, that edge. You want to make sure it locks into this uh, tangent edge. And this is going to be 0 0.2. Actually, it's supposed to be uh, 0.25. So we just double click on that. type in 0.25. Now we go to Features, Extrude Boss. Now we want to extrude up, and we want to extrude up a little bit higher than the actual um, than the actual top surface of that model. So we're going to extrude a blind 1.55 with one degree of draft. So just add another 5 in there, and one degree of draft, and hit Apply. The next thing is we have to create the linear pattern. The linear pattern is going to be um, 200,000 spacing by 16. So we go ahead and we go over here to linear pattern. The vector, we could select this top edge, plug in 200,000 and 16 of them. And it ends up where the last one is right on the very end, centered on that end point there. And let's go ahead and save this. OK, the next thing we have to do is go ahead and select this top base and start a sketch. 
and go normal two. I'm just going to hit the space bar for the quick normal two option. Zoom up as close as you can to the very first rib that was put in here. And then take your center line tool and find the corner right here and click on it. And then find the opposite corner over here and click on that. And then hit escape. If it's black, you're in good shape. If it's blue, then grab a corner and try and drag it back until it snaps in. Otherwise, you could add manually relationships to it. But it needs to be coincident to both those little corners. And this is going to be used in our equation. Go ahead and just let it plug in its own number. It should be 0.189. And what we can do here, we could actually name this by right-clicking on it. We could go to the, um, hold on a second, let me just hit escape. Actually clicking on it, on the left hand side we should get a lot of different in information. One thing we want to add to it is a dimension name, which um, is it's actually appearing here, so I'm going to have to right click and Okay, basically if you do just left click on it, you'll find over on the left hand side here a primary value option box. In the front there where it says D1, these are names that SOLIDWORKS automatically assigns to each dimension. Uh, depending upon the sketch you're in, in this case I'm on my third sketch within this model, so it, it's uh, called it D1 at sketch 3 because this is the first dimension. But I want to name it something that I could recognize a little bit easier than just um, the simple D1, D2, D3 because there's going to be a lot of D's because they stand for dimensions. So I'm going to actually call this one X because this is going to help us control our geometry inside the equation. And that's all this dimension is used for. And you'll see in a little bit where that ties in. The next thing we want to do is we want to uh, turn on or show our dimension names here. So we could right click up uh, or click on annotations there and there's an option show feature dimensions and then also we want to go up to the tools options okay after you go into annotations with the right click make sure display annotations and show feature dimensions is turned on if you do not see the dimensions on your model appear like you see here on the screen just hit the rebuild button up at the very top or control B as in boy this will display the dimensions for us for the entire model. The next thing we want to do is we actually want to display the dimension names so we can see them. So under options here, go to, uh, just under the system options general, there's an option show dimension names. Go ahead and apply that. And now you can see there's our X dimension that we added and everything else is just D1, D2, D3, D1, things like that. Okay, moving along, we're going to start going ahead and um, bringing up our equations editor in just a minute, but first we need to rename some of these things on here, like the 400, uh, 4 inch dimension is width, and the number, the 16, that's the number of rib copies, the 0.2 is the pattern distance, and the uh, radius is in this corner. So let's start with the radius, click on that, and then over to the left here, type in radius. And then over here on the uh, 16, call this call this rib copies. And then the 0.25, call that the pattern distance. This will help us identify these um, versus just raw numbers uh, later on our equation. Let's 
not necessary to do this, but it's it's not a bad practice, especially if you expect someone else to go back and check your work or to actually maybe modify something. This will help them understand it a lot better. Okay, so now that we have that done, we could actually bring up our ed uh, equations editor. And the equations editor is under the tools in equations. So we go up here to tools and find equations right here with a little summation symbol there. And the first thing we'd want to do is we want to go ahead and uh, move some of this actually out of the way. It's not a bad idea to maybe maneuver this so it's up at the top and then click on add. And as long as you didn't have any dimensions selected by accident initially, it should appear blank here. If there's something in there, go ahead and hit the backspace under the equations editor to change that or to get rid of whatever might be there. Now we have to go ahead and add our equations. So we have the rib copies at, uh, at the L pattern one is equal to integer. So let's go ahead and click on the rib copies. And that is equal to, so make sure you click on equal to, bracket, bracket, and the next dimension, if we take a look here, is going to be the width minus the radius, bracket. So we have to find the width, click on that, minus the radius, close bracket, divided by x bracket. And then there should be a plus one added. And hit OK. If you get a green check mark and it says evaluates to 17, you're in good shape. If you get a red marker, go back and make sure that you clicked on the right things. Don't try and add these manually. Um, if your spelling's off just a little bit, of course it's not going to work. So it's a good idea to actually click on the dimensions. Now technically with uh, just this, our equations will work. Um, there's one additional equation we're going to add though to uh, enable it to work even better. So. In this case, I'm just uh, accidentally had X still selected, so I'm going to back space on that. And we want to go pattern distance is equal to bracket width. And then it'll be minus the radius bracket. Sometimes you have to move this out of the way. divided by bracket ribs rib copies that is minus one close bracket and hit OK Again, it should evaluate with a green check mark. If there's a red check mark, that indicates that most likely you just missed something or clicked on the wrong geometry. If you need to edit one of these, you just click on it, and there's the edit button, and it'll bring it back. And you could go ahead and backspace, delete, add, things like that. Okay, let's go ahead and hit OK now. And you'll also see these little summation symbols that appear, or sigma. And that indicates that those are tied to a uh, equation now. So let's go ahead and finish this. I'm going to go ahead and select this face over here, and I'm going to go to draft. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not draft. Um, mirror. And instead of features to mirror, you want to select bodies to mirror and select the whole thing. Hit apply. And then do the same on this side. Select this face, mirror, bodies to mirror, select the whole thing, and hit apply.
Okay, now let's go ahead and check this out. If we uh, double click on the 4, let's increase it to 5.5. And actually, there is an error occurring here. Somehow, my, uh, my rib copies are the uh, actual. I must have selected the uh, diameter here. It's kind of odd. Anyway, let me um, 